Nithi, thank you for making the time and thank you for filling in the forms. Tell us what is your story? Well, um, I'm a 47 year old mother of two, um, recently semi-retired from the corporate world. So I spent the last 17 to 18 years seated in an office type environment. Uh, before that, I worked in various jobs, but um, predominantly sort of hospitality type work. So always on the move. Um, I dance semi-professionally as a ballerina, classical ballet for about 19 years until I was 22. Um, uh, I don't exercise. I'm super lazy and I recognise that. Um, I've always struggled with flexibility. So that's always been, a, as a ballerina, not a great thing. So I'd have to warm up about half an hour more than everybody else just to do the basics. But once I got there, I was fine. Um, my back pain started as a child, really. Um, and they discovered that I had something wrong with my hip joint. Um, it didn't quite form properly. It has a technical name, but I don't know what it is. But something about the socket of my hip just didn't form right around as it's meant to. So my hip often sort of slid incorrectly. Um, so I've, I've kind of grown up with a lot of physiotherapy, chiros, osteo, <laughs> name it, I've done it. I've had a cortisone injection in my hip. I've had one in my knee. Um, my knee problems have never returned. My hip has been ongoing. So at the moment, I don't really do much. Um, the pain is always there. It's just on a scale of how bad it is. Uh, it doesn't get better. I've just learned to live with it. Um, stretching helps when I was doing Pilates weekly before lockdown, and that helped immensely. Like I could do two or three pain-free days, completely pain-free. I'm not a fan of painkillers. I don't like taking tablets, um, antibiotics. I don't like any of that stuff. So I kind of live with it. If it's a really bad day, it involves a heat pack and sitting on the couch. <laughs> Unfortunately, I know that's terrible, but I just can't. Sometimes I struggle to go down the stairs. My, click, my hip actually makes a little clicking sound when it's at the worst in the morning. So it's at the worst in the morning after sleeping. I sleep an average of seven hours a night, sometimes six. And yeah, waking up is sometimes it's just a roll, hit the floor and take it from there. <laughs> That's it. That's my summary. <laughs> oh, wow. It's been a, a long time since mm. childhood. Yeah. Since I was about 12 or 13. Wow. Okay. So it sounded like it was initially like a um, in relation to growing that's what, the, yeah. yeah, so that's why that, and I think that was a lot of the problem, you know, in those days, especially, I, mean, I think now I've met a couple of doctors and specialists that, you know, oh, you're a ballerina and they kind of write things off straight away. I, you know, kind of go, oh, that's what it is. Um, you know, we had a doctor tell my mother that if I didn't stop dancing, that I'd have arthritis by 30 and wouldn't be able to walk. So you had these extreme views, you know, and I kind of felt like no one really took it seriously because I was a ballerina. So it was kind of all because I was growing or because I was too small or because I had a late period. <laughs> everyone had a different excuse. It didn't get to pain like this daily until maybe 10 years ago. Okay. Before that, it was sort of, if I overdid it, um, if I tried to jump, jumping's always been a problem, um, especially in ballet. There are certain jumps that you land on one foot. So things that were predominantly on my right foot were worse. Um, but yeah, it sort of got worse in the last 10 years, to be honest. Before that, it was relatively okay. It was every now and then my back would lock up or, you know, they treated it for my sciatic nerve for a while and that seemed to work um, and that was okay. But it was sort of once every three, four, maybe five months, but now it's a daily thing. And I'm also older, I get it, and less mobile. Yeah, okay. So it kind of gotten a bit worse since about a decade ago. Yeah. Before that... It seems like it was managed okay, and you mentioned that you're you were a bit more active back then as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, much Ooh. more. Had younger children, you know. The kids were at okay. soccer. Yep, yep, yep. You know, the kids are at soccer. You're walking True. around netball. There was, you know, always something happening. So, mm. but now they're adults, and I don't do anything. Yeah, um, you do many other things. But yes. Yeah. Um, so with the the changes you mentioned, movement. Any other kind of. Uh, activity changes, load changes, like lifestyle changes. I'm just thinking when it got worse that decade, um, what, what changed between, say, 11 years ago and 10 years ago? I think my career was more sit down. 
Mm -hmm. um, I was project managing, so my days were really long. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I often skipped me meals. Like I'd get to the end of the day and hadn't drank a glass of water all day. Mm. Um, it was just, it was just poor lifestyle management, you know. Um, so I was in a chair all day, every day. Um, mm. If I didn't have a lunch break, I didn't move from that chair except to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And that even wasn't as frequent as it should have been. Like, so it was just, that was just all consuming, I think. And I think I've just made it worse from that point on. Mm. Okay. That sounds like a, yeah, tough job, stressful kind of position and, and everything. Yeah, 10 years ago? That, was that, hours. that was, was that? the transition? Was it um, career change around that time or no, no, before or uh, after? Or? I kind of stayed in the same role then until 2018. Mm -hmm. um, I think it just got more hectic then. So at first it was, so prior to 10 years ago, it was a non-leadership position. Mm -hmm. From 10 years ago, it became a management position and a high managing position. So even if I travelled to Melbourne or Adelaide, where I was travelling, it was basically on the plane, off the plane, into an office. So I think that changed it as well. Wow. So always on the move, long days, kind of placing work before like <laughs> your diet. own nutrition yep. and yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yep. you had a lot of responsibilities and pressures and That's managing right. people. Yep. And I kind of never bounced back after that. Um, it got a little bit better. I guess, like I said, I know the more that I, the more I move, mm -hmm. the less, um, I guess, chronic it is. Mm. So if I have a good day, like if I go for a walk with my dogs, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I do my stretches in the morning and maybe, mm. you know, do a class or do some rowing because we've got a rower or even walk on my mum's treadmill, the mm. next day I wake up with really minimal pain. Um, so I know it has to do with activity. I just don't know how to connect those dots. <laughs> mm. Okay. So you're noticing the movement is helping. You're just yep. not sure. What are you not sure about exactly? Like if we were to uh, help I connect guess, the dots. Yeah, I guess I don't understand if it's just because of the movement or mm. if it's an exercise in particular or if it's just not being in a seated position for too long. Like I'm just not sure if it's, yeah, I don't exercise for weight loss. I just exercise because I can't walk if I don't basically. Mm, yes. Yeah, yeah. You need I'd to like exercise. To, yeah, I'd like, but I'd like to find something that I enjoy like rather mm. than, you know, it's almost like taking a pan, like taking two Panadol every morning because it's the only day. It, it, I don't enjoy it. I don't. I don't see the point of it at all. Yeah, so it'd be nice to find things that you actually intrinsically are motivated to do. You're not just Correct. doing it because you have to. Yes. What do you do in the? So you mentioned in the mornings. Yeah. Is that kind of like your own form, form of like a painkiller or Panadol? Yeah, I guess it is. I guess it is it's sort of. Well, my day starts a lot of the time on the floor, <laughs> so I roll out of my bed. Yes. Crawl. <laughs> and and what do you do? What kind of commando crawl? <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned you crawl, you roll around, <laughs> like you struggle, the hip clicks. What What do you do during that time? Um, and then I'll, oh, once I stand up, it's all okay. I just can't bend bend over. So I can't bend from the waist, as an example. So you know when you bend from the waist to pick things up, which is not the correct way to pick things up anyway but the average person can bend down to grab something. I can't do that. If I bend down, I won't get back up. It just locks up. Like I can't actually straighten. <laughs> so I have to crouch all the time. Yeah, okay. I can't bend like that. Mm. Without okay. it, if, if I do my stretches, I can kind of do it. Mm -hmm. um, so there was, I guess, a trail of thought with my very... Um, not knowledgeable or ever studied um, muscles. And I'm guessing that I don't have a very strong core. So I'm guessing that a lot of anything that would involve your core, I'm using my back muscles. So that's probably uh, also not great because I don't know how to do that. Probably. Okay. So, so you're, <laughs> you're not sure how to bend from the waist mm -hmm. and get back up or mm -hmm. just the bending in general? No, no, get, just the getting back up. Just the getting back up. So you're <laughs> able to do it. Yeah. It's more so you are at the moment struggling to come back upright. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you reckon it might be some form of weakness? I think so. That's just me, but I think so. Because okay. even in Pilates, when we do certain things, when we used to lift our legs and stuff, and she used to say, like, lower them and then hold mm -hmm. them, I can't do that. My legs just fall. Hmm. <laughs> okay. That, that shit's hard. <laughs> I know. It's but hard it move. shouldn't be that hard. Okay. <laughs>
Okay. Um, so bending from the waist mm -hmm. and the mornings you do a few rolls and once you start walking around, it seems yeah. like it, it, the clicking happens, it gets a bit better, a bit yeah. more movement. And then I just do some um, like stretches on my hands and knees, like, like in Pilates, they call it the child pose. Yes. And I stretch my back out and then I sort of arch my back like a cat and straighten it again and yeah. do a few of those. And then I do some of my old ballet exercises just to stretch my legs out, like mm -hmm. sort of not splits, but, you know, kind of getting that warm up. Yeah. And then I'm fine. Like today I'm fine, but okay. I couldn't get out of bed this morning. <laughs> yes. And these stretches are on your bed before no, you get just, up? No, just here on my mat. Okay. So you get up, you walk around and it's like feeling a bit sore and painful. And then you do the, the stretches on the mat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. As your like daily morning routine, yeah. whenever. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hmm. That's my dog. Yes. My deliveries are arriving. If you need to go, Letty. No, can... no, no. I've got people here. Okay. okay. So we figured out the, so the mornings is when it's worst. When is it the best? Um, when do you not notice it as much? No. Oh, not notice it as much? Hmm. Probably like now, like now, like middle of the day. Mm -hmm. um, but like, for example, today I've been pottering around, I've been cleaning, um, I've just cooked, I'm making lasagna tonight. So I've been standing in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, I cleaned the guinea pig cage, like so I've been moving. It's So it's better. But now when I start to sit down by three o'clock, it'll start hurting again. Okay. With all the, you've been given a few explanations. You mentioned the <laughs> hip socket, like yep. it slides in correctly. Um, you mentioned weak core, perhaps. Yep. 100%. Uh, you mentioned you've had sciatic nerve kind of treatment. You've seen yep. physios, chiros, osteos. Yep, um, the works. There's a few I've, other things like you've I've noticed. Done acupuncture. Well. Yep. I've done acupuncture on my hip as well to relieve that. And then somebody else said that I needed needles in my knees because that's actually where the nerve was. It was connected to me. I've done a million things. I've been told that one leg's shorter than the other mm -hmm. by a significant amount. Mm. Um, I've been told not to wear high heels. I've been told mm. not to do point work. You know, I, I think I've had it all. <laughs> nothing solved it though. And nothing has been an explanation that I can go, that explains it. Yeah, that must be a bit confusing when you have all these different kind of opinions for the same same kind of issue it's exactly it's the same like same it's kind cool. of yeah the pain is in exactly the same spot mm -hmm. um it hasn't changed it hasn't progressed it's not different mm. when it locks up it locks up in exactly the same manner the feeling for me is exactly the same mm. um and that doesn't change that's just how it is <laughs> based on what you've been told what what do you think might be some of the things influencing it you mentioned movement yeah but you've been given a lot of diagnoses what what do you think are some of the, the causes you know and it's funny because you hear the diagnosis and you go oh my god that that makes so much sense mm. and then the next person gives you another diagnosis and you think yep yeah, that's it this guy's got it or you know and I don't know I actually don't have any idea I know mm. that there has to be something in my hip but then I'm a big believer in the mind is very powerful and you can, things uh, can be psychosomatic. It could be that I've been told there's something wrong with my hip and there actually isn't. And the pain in my back is actually just being lazy. I don't know. Uh, for me, logically, I was always not as flexible as I should have been given the amount of exercise I was doing. When I was a ballerina, mm -hmm. I was dancing, you know, on Saturdays I would dance, you know, 12, 13 hours. I'd be there all day in the studio dancing mm -hmm. and I'd still have to work on my flexibility. So you get it. Some people just aren't naturally flexible, but I've never been able to touch my toes. Ever. Okay. Ever. And I've never been terribly overweight. Like I'm probably maybe five or six kilos heavier than I should be at the moment, but I've never been overweight. Um, mm. I've never had a bad diet as such. Um, you know, I eat quite balanced, quite healthy, but I've never been able to touch my toes ever. Mm. What other people found, I've got a girlfriend who weighs over 100 kilos and she can put her palms flat on the floor without a problem, like doesn't even have to warm up. Mm. I've, never, I've never been able to do that, ever. Mm. <laughs> so maybe I'm just not flexible and maybe my back has something to do with that. I don't know. <laughs> mm. Okay. What, with that flexibility, um, apart from the, the bending from the waist, what, how else does it kind of impact you? Like if, if the flexibility wasn't an issue, what would you be 
doing differently? I don't know that I'd do anything different. I've never run Mm -hmm. and I'm scared of running because my hip always hurts when I jump. So anytime Mm. I, you know, that movement, Mm-hmm. I'm sorry I don't run out of fear I've never run on a treadmill okay um yeah just and that's a fear thing that's not a I've hurt myself doing that sure it's a yeah. valid if you've experienced the pain when yeah. jumping then <laughs> yeah. obviously it would make sense that running would be a bit you know scary yeah and I, when I was like the 14 years ago I used to go to the gym twice and every like we used to wait I used to get up at five o'clock in the morning and go to the gym with my friends and mm-hmm. I've never had a problem before then but again, then that's why I associate it with exercise. I'm like, mm. maybe if I just, but getting up early is also a, a concept that makes things hard because mm-hmm. it's not a pleasant experience to wake up at all. Yeah, yeah. And you had a bit of social support back then. Oh, the yeah, friends. true. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, you, okay. had to meet, you had to meet people there at 5 o'clock in the morning. You didn't want to be the only one that didn't show up. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you'd let them down. Yeah. So there were, so far I'm getting a few like kind of activities, goals that you'd like to do. So the, mm. from the form you mentioned, it'd be nice to get out of bed without pain. Yeah. The Then touching the toes, the floor. Uh, I've never been able to do that. But you know what? If I can bend down that far, it'd be awesome. <laughs> okay. And then the sit-ups. With, with my legs one? straight. With my legs straight. So my, legs my, straight. Okay. my excuse has always been my legs are too long. So that's my funny excuse. <laughs> okay. Well, you can cut them off. I could, absolutely. <laughs> it's just another excuse you make just to cope. Yeah. Well, it can. Well, do you think that could be a factor? Like if we had, you know, you had two best friends, one of them had short legs, long torso, and another one had long legs and short torso. And your best friend with long legs is like, hey, I can't touch the toes. This is BS and I hate my body, just as an example. And then the yeah. other one's like, I can deep squat. I can do everything. I'm yeah. just really short. Uh, how would you make sense yes. of that? Oh, I, I just absolutely agree with my friend with the long legs and go, absolutely. So we just won't do it. Someone's, someone's valid, validated my, what my, my suspicion was. So I don't need to do research. They're validated. That's it. She's obviously right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. W- why do you want to be able to touch the floor? I know oh, that's a thing like it just seems silly but because it seems like something that I've never been able to do like people are always like wow you're a ballerina you used to dance on your toes like it's such mm. an incredible thing and mm. I don't find that incredible I find it really more incredible that I've never been able to freaking touch my toes <laughs> that's ingrained mm. um I can ride a bike still mm. but um unfortunately I can't stay on a bike for too long mm. but I used to enjoy roller skating I used to enjoy riding a bike I don't do any of that okay I've got roller skates that I'd like to use, but that whole concept of what if I fall? Mm. I think fear becomes a thing as you get older. Um, yeah, I think I'm pretty kamikaze for kind of lots of things, but yeah, I think the fear of what if my hip gives out and I fall? Mm. Makes sense. Changes things. Yeah, yeah. It changes the way we view ourselves and what we can do and our confidence in trying yeah. in the first place. That's it. That's exactly it. Yeah. That's okay. exactly it. Hmm. There's so many different things you could try. Um, <laughs> the brain's ticking away. Is it? <laughs> Don't start yeah. with touching my toes because that's really unfair. <laughs> well, well yeah, and that's why I asked, like, why do you even need to in the first place? Like, you, you, there's nothing that you have to. There's no kind of prerequisite for touching your toes unless it's really meaningful and you know uh, important for you in some way. Yeah. That's totally fine too. Yeah, Which, yeah, yeah. Yeah. If if you could get, it sounds like if you could get by with life, you know. Without having it's not to gonna touch. change things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not gonna change. You, you can if you bend your knees. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just can't get back up, but yeah. It, okay. I'd have to warm up first. Like yes. I'd have to do lots of stretches and hmm. then maybe I can do it. Okay. So <laughs> it maybe just seems like it just really seems like one of those really easy things. You know, when you see mm. on TV, people are always bending over and picking up after their children or doing that, but I can't do that. Mm. Okay. So it's not really about touching my toes, it's just that whole being able to just bend from the waist type thing yeah yes bending and coming back up (laughs) you know you see all those old movies like I like all those like like old 1950 shows and you know the mum's always bending over in the oven and stuff Mm. like that I don't bend over like that I can't Mm. I'll fall into the oven (laughs) okay you you would how would you do it I just crouch down on my knees like a squat I guess yes down yeah okay it works it's not the end of the world (laughs) 
It seems yeah. so silly when you say it out loud. No, it's okay. It's still like a, again, a valid thing to do, especially if everyone around you is able to do it and you're not able to do it. You feel like yeah. something's wrong with you. Yeah. Um, My mother's 72. She can bend at the waist. How tall is your mother? <laughs> I don't think she's even five foot. I don't know. Maybe yeah. five foot. Uh, 148 centimetres maybe, if that. She's short. Uh, and how long are her legs compared to her torso? <laughs> uh, actually, they're very short. <laughs> I think she might be a midget. Technically. Just. Maybe. Yeah. Just. Maybe just over. That's fine. <laughs> Yeah, so, so I think um, we're acknowledging that your body is different. Mm. With this body that you have at the moment, what would be the most, like, enjoyable thing that you wanted to work towards? We can look at today the bending. Yep. Just to see how you're doing it and assess it. Um, I can't turn back time and go to the morning and see how you can change what you're doing at the moment uh, during your morning routine. Oh, but, I can show you. It takes me 10 minutes. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> but you can show me what you're doing. Um and then the last thing is sit-ups, you mentioned? Oh, I can't Tell do sit-ups. Do you want to? I used to be able to. I used to do heaps. I can't, okay. do, I can't do the plank either. Okay. So They're just two things that I used to be able to do really well, and mm -hmm. now I can't. I've tried. I even Paul bought this little mat. My husband, Paul, bought a little mat that, like, sits in the arch of your back. Yeah. And apparently that's, like, to make sure you're doing it on the right form or something. I don't know. It's always spending money on exercise stuff. I can't even do it with that. Okay. And you'd like to be able to do it? Yes. yes, yes. When was the last time you were doing sit-ups? Confidently. Mm. Mm, maybe 10 years ago. Okay. So around that time? That maybe we mentioned that before. was probably the last time I exercised other than my Pilates classes. Okay. So we got the running, jumping, the riding bike mm. and roller skates. Yep the bending, and then the sit-ups. Which mm -hmm. one of those would be the most enjoyable, meaningful? Oh, roller skating, 100%. Oh. Okay. I love being out. I like doing that. But I don't like outdoor exercise and I don't like gardening, but mm -hmm. I like to be outdoors if I'm doing something that I perceive as fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I like that. I think I'd like that. I used to love it. So I like that. Okay. I'm thinking with the assessments that we did today, it would be easier to start with the bending forward. Yes, oh, and then 100%. Go from there. Yep. Um, but this just gives me an idea of what kind of direction you want to go. Maybe the bending towards. forward and then the sit up yep. would be the kind of, because I think for roller skating, I kind of probably need to have all of that area a bit stronger before I, because it's sort of like an upright, you know, having your core muscles really in line. Hmm. And I don't think that's in line at the moment. I think it's all pretty messed up. Okay. It's all pretty messed up, you say? Yeah. I always feel like I'm lopsided when I'm standing. Okay. So, yeah, there might be a few things that we can do before starting roll skating so you feel Correct. a bit more confident. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And just to cover medical history, you mentioned uh, bladder sling. Mm -hmm. Just yep. tell us a bit more. So I had um, a pr uh, pre prolapse of my bladder. Yes. Um, about 40, no, not that long. I don't actually remember. Might have been eight years ago. Okay. And um, so I chose, so I was given many options, mm -hmm. um, but after doing a female physiotherapist who specialised in women after birth, yep. she recommended that it probably was best just to do the surgery because it's a little bit too far gone for pelvic floor exercises. Mm -hmm. So we did do a treatment first. I did all the pelvic floor and we did like an electrocution, not electrocution, but some zapping mm -hmm. stuff down below mm -hmm. and yeah, so anyway, I had the surgery, but yeah, so one of the conditions of my surgery is that I can't do weighted squats. I can't ride bikes for too long. Um, I can't horse ride for too long. There are just some things that, you know, because of the way that sling sits, mm -hmm. you don't, yeah. Um, and I get limited to lifting 10 kilos. So my dog's on, my dog's on the border. My dog's oh. just on the border for me to pick her up. Okay. <laughs> the little one. Um, so that's that. Um, and I've had no complications. There's been a mm. lot of stuff in the media about the pelvic mesh and stuff. I've had no complications, oh, good. nothing wrong. Um, mm. I've been maybe one of the lucky ones. Mm. Um, I'm asthmatic. Mm. Um, I take daily treatment for that. Mm. Um, I think that's really all I have. I suffer. So I, 
get a little bit anxious. I suffer from an anxiety disorder, um, but that doesn't affect my physical or mental being. I don't take any medication for that okay. anymore. I used to. And no other changes recently with health status? No, no. probably edging close to menopause, but mm -hmm. neither here nor there. Okay. Have you had a fracture, trauma in the area, the hip, the back? No. Like a fall or any no. collision? No. I've broken my metatarsals twice mm -hmm. on my right foot. right foot, if that helps. <laughs> I wouldn't say it helps, but yeah, good to know. Um, with the bladder sling, so no complications. Was it, um, what happens when you lift up the dog? Chloe, I'm assuming. No, no, Lola, the little Lola. one. Oh, um, nothing. You, you can't lift nothing. up Chloe. Just a specialist, the um, professor that I saw basically said that the way is to prolong it and to make sure it stayed in position and mm -hmm. didn't tamper with, it, with any other organs was to limit weights. Limit weights. And in squatting position is really the worst bit. Mm. but other than that yeah I don't really I don't have anything that I lift heavier than that but when I used to go to the gym I used to like doing those air you know the air pressure mm -hmm. you know they're like a little circuit Machines. that yeah I like I liked doing all that but obviously I don't do that because I don't know if I can yeah and I don't was... know how to research that I don't know what to look at I don't know what he meant like a 10 kilo limit what is that standing up or yeah. is that he was specific about weighted squats Mm -hmm. He was specific about that. He said none, zero, none at all. Mm. But he said I could still do squats and sure. lunges, but nothing with weights on. So I mm. have to watch my weight. Your actual but body I don't weight? Know. Or... No, lifting weights, but yeah, I don't right. know. I didn't really ask why or anything. Mm. Yeah, I wonder if eight years ago the kind of literature has changed a little bit since then on the bladder slings. I don't, yeah, I've never done any research. I don't even remember what year it was, to be honest. I'm sure I could mm. find my medical history. I don't actually remember when it was. Mm. I was living, probably, I could probably work it out by the house I lived in. Mm. But yeah, I can get more details for you later. And when you lift Lola, it's, it's you don't That's feel, fine. yeah, anything. No. So the main concern was the and repositioning I, where, and the tempering. And where, I, where, and where I work, I've got, I make dough and the mm. bags are 12 kilos of dough, mm. flour. And mm. I kind of don't really, like, I don't lift that or throw it on my shoulder, mm. but I kind of tip it in and, like, mm. I've never felt pain or discomfort or anything like that. Just realised how weak I am now because 12 kilos would have been nothing mm. you know, 15 years ago. Yeah. Would you want to explore that, yeah, that kind I, of limit? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I can't see why if I'm seated mm. or, you know what I mean, I can't see what that, what that would change, but... I'm also nervous. I can't see something goes wrong. Sure. <laughs> it's not yeah. something that can be fixed. <laughs> yeah. Mm, yeah, maybe that will put a, an asterisk on there if we can get like a second opinion or like a follow-up yeah. with someone that would know a bit more in terms of the positioning. Um, my understanding is that we can adapt over time okay. to strength and the more muscle yeah. you have, the more protective it would be, the stronger you are the less kind of tension you would need to use. Yep. And maybe it's the tension that would change things in the internal organs and the mm. kind of, you know, when you breath hold, the intra-abdominal pressure changes right. a little bit. And yep. that actually might be more pressure than if you were to get progressively stronger yeah, and not need to, you know, ugh, yeah. kind of tense. Yeah, yeah. And I kind of think like that exactly maybe what I'm doing. Like mm -hmm. I just feel like maybe I'm, I don't know, protecting or something. And that's why I have pain. Like I am, whatever I'm doing to avoid it is actually mm. making it worse. Like I remember when I had knee problems and they used to say you're overcorrecting on your other leg mm. to protect that leg, but there's nothing wrong with the leg. Just walk normally. Mm. Mm. And when I stopped doing that, it went away. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe, maybe it is all that. Maybe if I was stronger, I wouldn't have back pain. Okay. Because that would kind of line up with the surgery and me stopping exercise and, yeah. See, you might have just cracked it on the nail on the head <laughs> or the hammer on the nail. I've never understood that. Same. But you, you came up with that yourself. <laughs> yeah. Oh, did I? Okay. Um, you just worded it way better than I did. I'm just listening. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so we can play around with a few bending and see what you're doing. Because, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how sometimes our body, we have that protective response without noticing yeah. that we're actually doing it, um, which is a totally normal response. When we have had pain. Yep. Um, expectations for today? 
Oh, no, it was, I, I'm not, I'd, I'd had none, to be honest. I didn't okay. know what we were doing. I, I kind of thought we'd, um, like this, like that we'd have a chat and yep. you could give me something that, you know, maybe I hadn't thought about or perhaps not told me that I'm just lazy and need to move. You know, I was hopeful. But anyway, I'm not eating chocolate. I'm usually sitting here eating chocolate or drinking. So we're doing well. <laughs> so far? So good? All good, no. Okay. Uh, is there anything that you want me to know before we have an assessment and see how you no, move? Anything no, I've missed? Good. No. No, you've done very well. You've summarised it very well. Okay. All right. How about we start with the the main thing you mentioned, the, the bending, the hip hinging. Just yep. want to see how you're doing it and we might play around with a few, a few things. So you are connected with the earphones, right? Would you yeah, be I able to? I can, I'm sure yeah. I can just unplug them. Yeah, as long as you can, you can still hear me and such. So yeah, make some space. Oh, how to make, these are the sounds I make when I move. Oh, yes. <laughs> Enjoy the sound. Hang on. Okay. So wait. Yeah, take your time. Wait, hang on. Hang on. I, yes. Now? Yes. Yeah, hang on. I just put it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can hear me? Right. Hang on, camera. Like those people on TV that you can only see their nostrils. Yes. Can Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Can you see me lower? Yes. Just a, yes, a little bit lower, and you can step back a little bit, please. Yep. Cool. Maybe just a touch lower as well, if you yeah. don't mind. The laptop a little bit lower. Just the camera down a little bit, so, so I can see just a bit more of the, like the knees. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Cool. Okay. Now, ah, I'm gonna be very pedantic. First of all, blinds, do you have them? Just so I can see a bit clearer. Perfect. And then the camera up a little bit more. That's better, yeah. Yes, perfect. All right, so without cutting off your legs, show me bending. Show me how you- This way? Yeah. Show me what you mean, yes. You want me to bend forward? I won't be able to get back up. Show me how you would at your tolerance and willingness. Yeah. The cushion down. Yeah. Okay. So cool. if I needed to get that cushion, I get it down. Okay. How was that? Painful. Yeah. What? Sorry, my husband's just waking up. That's okay. Hi, Paul. <laughs> Hello. Is that Daniel? He we're doing a treatment. So if I get like that, like I'm like a normal person, like a normal that's person. as far as I can go. Okay. With my legs straight. Yes. And otherwise I'd have to just bend and kind yes. of go like that. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's yeah. try a few things. Let's try. What if you were to have your feet wide? Like sumo style. Yeah. And allow your toes to go wherever. Yeah. What happens? <laughs> Talk me through. I don't know that I can get back up. <laughs> if you can use your, you can bend down if you want. You can bend your knees. <laughs> yeah. Chloe. Hey, Chloe. What, what happened compared to when your feet were closer? What did you notice? Um, it was easier to go over, mm -hmm. but the same to come back up. Hmm. Same. So the same pain coming. like here, this, just where those bones are. Yes. It kind of feels like something squishing it like pushing it together, hmm. whereas with my legs open, it wasn't as bad. Okay. When you say squishing things together, what do you mean? Like what kind of? Yeah, like are? just there. Mm -hmm. I don't know what those bones look like, but it feels like they're just pushing into each other, like squishing. Inward pushing? Yeah. Outward pushing or yeah, inward. inward. Okay. Yeah. Right. Interesting. And with the, so it was the same difficulty coming up. When you are about to come up, how do you do it? Like, what do I you push, notice? I push myself off the floor. With the hands? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's try. Do you want another pillow just to make it a bit easier? I'm happy with that. I'm no, no, I'm good. So you're okay with that pillow? And as long as Chloe's okay with the laptop being there? It's fine. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, let's try now. What if you were, have you ever tried doing a few times to see what happens? No. So at any point, this is your body. You can, I can't feel what you're feeling. 
you can stop at any time. Yeah. How about we try different feet positions? Okay. Yeah. And doing a few reps. How, how does five reps? Five oh, yeah, I'll give it a crack. As long as I can just push myself up and it's not, you know, yeah. getting measured on no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Go for it. So, see, I feel like, um, well, I don't know how it's meant to feel, but for me I feel like I'm kind of crunching my whole body in and like kind of rolling. Sure. Does that make sense? Yes. Whereas I kind of feel like it should just be a fluid movement, whereas I feel like it's these little million steps of like rolling a piece of paper. Hmm. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, I'm down. Yeah. yeah. That was easier that time. So not as far, not as far apart. So probably shoulder length. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And then if you were to, yeah, yeah, you can use your hands to come up. Cool. Why do you think that was easier? I don't know. Because I can do it now. See? <laughs> I feel like that bird on the Simpsons. Hmm. And I can do that, but I don't know that I can get all the way down to the floor. What, what would all the way down to the floor be? like? Well, hands? My hands are up here, so I can't sure. get that cushion. Okay. And just come up again. Let's try. Yeah. Let's try with the – what if you brought the cushion a little bit closer? It will be great. Yep. yep. And yeah. when you do that – That's my legs straight, locked straight. Okay. So now you can breathe. You can chill. Breathe, 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 breathe. Because the other thing uh, I can, I'm, I'm just wondering, I can't really see, I can hear things. What do you do with your breathing when you go down? I hold my breath. Okay. Have, what if you tried breathing out as you go down? Just curious. So now I've got to think about how to breathe. Oh, yeah, that's easier. Okay. We found something. So we can't shorten your legs, but you know, <laughs> no. you don't want that, but you noticed that it was easier to come down? Yes, much easier. Still can't touch, but. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. Cool. So like I said, we can't, maybe because of your body, we can't go down with the leg straight, um, but we made it a bit easier. Okay. What if you tried what you're doing before? And tense and hold your breath as you come down into that position. No, it just has to be stirred. Stirred only. Ah. She said stirred only. She said stirred only. <sighs> yeah, I didn't like the holding my breath. How come? What happened? I don't know. Something didn't feel nice. Hmm. Yeah, it's that, that's, that's, that's a different pain. Interesting. That's okay. like a, like, that's almost like a, when you need to crack your knuckles. Yes. It's that pain. Mm, yeah. So that when there's like that breath holding and tension, you notice the pushing, the squeezing together yeah. a bit more. Yeah. And what happens when you. Didn't feel it at all. What, what do you notice as you do that? Just do a, a rep with that one, the breathing out. What no, do it's just fluid. It's more fluid. It's more not that rolling. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. It just seems more, I don't know, like a, like it's not a problem now. <laughs> like if that's if it's just about breathing, then that's pretty ridiculous, isn't it? Well, ridiculous is subjective. <laughs> if you were to show me your hand and come a bit closer, just so I can see a bit more, show me, like you can face the, the screen and show me, uh, step back a little bit more. Yep. Have one hand out like this, just copy me. Sorry? Have one hand out like this, just copy me. Yep. And form a fist. Yep. And squeeze your fist as much as you can and tighten your arm muscles and your forearm muscles and your breath holding and everything and do a wrist circle. So try to move your wrist around while keeping as much tension as possible. And then relax. Now do a wrist circle with as little tension as possible. Which, what happened? Yeah, that one was painful. That's not painful. Hmm. Yeah. So I can't see what's happening and I don't know 100% for certain, but we do know if you were to 
tense your back yeah and all the joints in your back and breath hold which is a normal human response and we've got pain by the way yeah and then try and move like that yeah just like the wrist i wonder it's if like that- we're locking locked up because you mentioned locking up you mentioned yeah tightening, squeezing yeah. And tensing and then i wonder what you do in the mornings probably the same because I'm <laughs> so I'm literally doing these one <laughs> like <Yeah>. this one <laughs> until I can get to here to like just go back and then all I do is just stretch that out and breathe because obviously they teach you how to breathe properly in Pilates but it's I've tied it in with the movements so when I go back I breathe in then when I go forward I breathe out like it's all in, like timed yeah, what are you what are you taking so far from this? That this is just a breathing technique <laughs> that I probably could re- reduce a lot of it just by not holding my breath when I get out of bed in the morning. Worth a try. We don't know. So no, I know. I'll try it tomorrow. Don't you worry. You'll be the first phone call I make. Yeah. Um. So. But I see you didn't get to hear that. I just went over to get my water bottle, and my feet just went. <laughs> Oh, cool, cool. And so, and what happened? Any kind sometimes of it thing? takes hours to get that to happen. So it's oh. pretty. It's pretty like comforting when that happens. That's all. That could be my mind, but now it won't keep going down the stairs. Oh, okay. Um, have you had like other clicking joints before? No. Like the shoulders or knees, like cracking, creaking. No. no. Okay. Oh, my feet. Yeah, like, I do that. Yeah. Just. They just do that. They click my ankles, my toes. I can make them all make sounds. Yep. Okay. But it doesn't hurt. Okay. And with the hip clicking just then, did it, what what happened? That's, that is a, like a relief. That is Mm. now, I can put weight on it. Like I can put weight on my leg. Like I wouldn't have been before. I was sitting cross-legged as well. So that's kind of makes it easier rather than sitting with my legs straight because it feels like it just always feels like it's not right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's like a bit of a relaxation release. Yeah, kind of. It just feels like it's not in the right spot. Hmm. But now it's good. Okay. Cool. Oh, does, does that, so with the bending from the waist, uh, we noticed the breathing technique and you responded really well to it. Um, yeah. I wonder, can you show me some sit-ups? Would you be willing to try? Yeah. Can you see my red mat? Let me just double. If you just move it down a little bit more. Yes, much better. Yeah. Red mat. Oh. Ah, oh, here we go. <laughs> That's as far as I can go. Cool. Awesome. Who told you you need to go further? Um, I kind of used to be able to put my hands over to like past my knees. Mm. So I could go like it's, uh, like that. I could be there mm-hmm. easily, like not mm. groaning. Just okay. Easily. Now I can't. Is that a dumbbell in the corner, the orange thing? Neither. Oh, thing. yeah, I lost the other one. Oh, that's fine. How heavy is it? Oh, it's only like two and a, one and a half. Okay. So it was my TV watching for my arms. <laughs> yeah, cool, cool. Um, so I lost one. Have you ever tried a sit-up with a dumbbell? In my hand? No, I've, I've done it with the, those discs, you know, that you put on the end of the weights. Yes. I can't do that now. That's fine. So how about we try something? If you go into the same position and what I want you to try is... Swing the dumbbell forward, like don't actually throw it, holding <laughs> on. But s- yes, like use use the dumbbell to your advantage. Use some momentum and just see yeah. if you can swing it through your legs, like you're passing it through the legs, through the knees. All in one motion. All in one motion. Oh my god! Oh, crap, crap, crap. oh that works it's easier. Cool. <laughs> cool. Now you can drop the dumbbell there and do the same thing with your arms. This will be a little bit different. Go for it. Oh, 
Without the dumbbell. Without the dumbbell. Same thing though. Imagine you have a dumbbell. What happened? Nothing. It can do it. <laughs> okay. Cool. Okay. How are you feeling? Good. <laughs> I'm really good. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. What? I feel silly. What did you learn from that? Um, mind over matter. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Really? Mind? It's, what did I you just learn? Yeah, like you I limit just, so many things because you're used to having the pain. Sure. That's understandable. Yeah. And you limit who, lots. Because I could easily that? do that. I can add that to my morning routine and that will slowly build up the strength. Only my arms as well, because my arms are like I used to be not strong. I've never been really strong. But you know, Paul's got weights that are, you know, 10 kilos or whatever. That shouldn't have been a problem for me to lift, but I can't, I can't even move them. I can't even move his actual little weights, but I probably can. Probably just need to stop saying can't. My ballet teacher used to hit us every time we said can't. She used to have a duster, a feather duster, and she'd whack us behind the legs. Wow. I know, old times, different times. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so if if you had uh, a best friend who was never taught how to do things and they were never taught, like, you know, how to move their body in the way that, that suits them because everyone in the class moves a bit differently and they're a bit more flexible and your best friend was like coming over to you and, and they're like, this is BS. I hate this. this. is not cool. I don't know why I can't, I can't do anything. What would you, and, and then they see a trainer or a clinician that was able to show them up. Oh, all I needed to do was just do things a bit differently. Yeah. Um, and then they, yeah. Oh, would, absolutely. Kind of oh, but that's a thing because it depends on the situation and, you know, the environment makes a lot, has a lot to do with that. Like, so I guess, you know, back then I would have gone, well, you just need to try harder. Like, or I would point out what she was doing wrong. Whereas now I'd probably go, oh, don't worry about it. Like, who cares? But there's an in between there of you just move differently, just do it differently. Like, you kind of can still, I guess, what I've got from today is you can still do it, just adapt it a little bit. That, it's more comfortable one, so you don't give up as easily, um, and it can be done. <laughs> yeah. So I can't say I can't do sit ups anymore. I just have to do a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> that's how I'm. That's but that's that's the yeah. interpretation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think you're right. So um, the the more you do it, the more you kind of retrain the systems. Because yeah. Because at the moment there is a kind of subconscious automatic response of breath holding and tensing. Yep. Yeah which is, has been there for maybe a decade. Yeah. Say. So it might not take one minute to, you know, retrain the entire 10 years of the movie. Bad habit. Yeah. yeah. It's just a different habit. Yeah. Can you tell I'm trying to be as kind and self-compassionate as possible? Yeah, I'm kind of just waiting for you just like to yell at me or slap me or something <laughs> like <laughs> No, that makes perfect sense because, you know, the funniest thing is, though, is that I've always, um, like, when in the, before you were born, mm -hmm. aerobics was the big thing, you know, mm -hmm. and there used to be a thing that was like a step and you did step exercises, you know, and, like, they had videos on the TV, VHS and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And when I went to one of these classes, they were ruthless. They would yell at you, you know, mm -hmm. come on, ladies. No, they'd yell. Anyway, and this lady was always saying, you're never going to get it because you're not breathing right. You should be breathing out when you step down. You should be breathing in when you step up. Mm -hmm. So it's not the first time I've been told that breathing is if interfering with something. Yeah. Okay. I overthink it. I overthink breathing. Ah. I think there's a, there's two things. There's one is knowing what we should do and the other one is doing it. And they're completely separate. Yeah. Because Because you didn't purposefully before you bent down that first time, go, I got a breath hold. No, no. I don't, but and I actually, like now I, I consider myself relatively intelligent. I don't know why I do that. I actually don't understand why. It doesn't make sense. Hmm. <laughs> and, and I'm about making sense. I'm about common sense. That sure. does not make sense. <laughs> sure. Well, um, with the kind of pain system, would you like a, a quick kind of explanation? Yeah. Um, Basically, when your body is under threat or has a sense, a perception of threat, 
it needs to protect itself in some way. Yeah. Kind of like a, a kid that has been maybe bitten by a dog. Okay. So it's a fear response. And this is a protective, normal yep. response. Yeah. And now if we have society around us saying that we're doing things wrong, and if we have a, a sedentary lifestyle as well, that also just discourages movement, makes things a lot harder. If we mm. have other priorities as well to get to, we don't have time to take care of our, you know, exercise routines and such. Yeah. That fear is still there. And it's still real. Yeah. So with the more we practice and the more that we are aware of how our body responds, kind of like the wrist exercise. Yeah. The more we can learn new ways of doing it, uh -huh. learn different ways. Because we kind of yeah. get boxed into this way. Like I need to do a sit up slow and no momentum. Yep. Yeah. You want to see my sit up slow with no momentum? So this is, you can see, yeah. So sit up, what you did, I can't. Now, if you lift up your legs, you can get up, but that's like cheating. But no one tells us that. So if I was to do what you did and swing, now I can do it. But if I don't use my hands, I can't do it. And that is generally what happens with the sit-ups. You just don't get taught that. Does that? There you go. See? I learned something new. I learned lots of things, actually. I need to go out and go for a walk. Let's summarise. What did you learn today? What did you take from... The, I guess the the biggest thing, like for me, the biggest, because I don't like, I've never been a big fan of feeling like I should have known that, you know, that aha moment. I'm not a fan of those, right, but just, just my personality type because I'm a leader and I'm, you know, inspirational and, you know, I'm a mentor and I should, I should know this shit, you know. Sorry. Um, but for me it was just that. We have a saying in sales because I was a sales manager a long time ago and it's keep it simple, stupid. It's the KISS theory. Mm -hmm. So when you're selling to people, you want to keep it simple, right? Mm -hmm. And I can't believe that the most simple thing to help me with back pain is just breathing. Like, do you know how stupid I feel? Mm. <laughs> do you know? Like, honestly? like Yeah. I feel it's, it's and that's, of course, but, I would feel the same. Like, it makes but, sense. Most, the, like, but it, the biggest aha light bulb moment because, and it all just makes so much sense. Mm. And then that whole the dog analogy was really good too because it is it is that little bit it is a fear and maybe a self created fear because it's never actually I've never actually hurt myself or hurt my back. I've never fallen. I've never you know I've just been told so many times that I have this problem and it, it is a fear response. So maybe maybe there isn't anything there. Maybe I've created this. Like out of fear, like you don't, I don't know, I'm saying, but you know when you just get told something so many times that you just start mm. to believe it? Mm. Like that's where my mind is at the moment now. Like I'm kind of thinking, hmm, have I ever actually had an x-ray that shows there's something wrong? Mm. You know that type of stuff? That's mm. what's processing in my mind. You ask me what I've learned today. These are the things that are going through my mind now. Mm. Mm. One, you're so stupid you don't know how to breathe. And two, is there anything actually wrong with you, you fat cow? <laughs> you asked. I'm telling you. <laughs> I just wasn't expecting it. The, uh, the bluntness. Oh, yeah. I've got no, no filter. I've that. been really, I've been so well behaved for almost for an hour now. I'm really going well. That's the that's the most filter I've had my entire life. Ah, <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Well, did we just improve your flexibility? Um, I don't know. I don't care. I feel better. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. I'm going to go. I'm almost going to try, but like now and like for the rest of the week, just try and do things that I keep thinking I can't do, but breathe. Yeah. 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 Slowly. Yeah. So what's, yeah, let's see. What, what could you try? What is, what's an action plan to wrap up? If you um, well, write down things or. Oh yeah. I write everything down. That's 
Yeah. That's just me. I write a lot. <laughs> I have to-do lists for everything. I have to-do lists for my to-do lists. Um, but, yeah, no, I'm absolutely going to get – October was meant to be my get fit month too. So this is one of the reasons for this session. So maybe that removes some of the obstacles when Paul says – after our walk, let's do some exercise. I go, no, you know, my back, maybe I won't do that and maybe I'll actually jump on and do some exercise and just slowly yeah. start to build up some strength. And every time I think I can't, I'll remember the moment when I was told you just need to breathe. <laughs> exhale. <laughs> my neighbours are going to go, what's this crazy woman? Why is she always yelling, exhale, exhale? <laughs> but no, that's exactly a little. I'm going to do little steps. I'm not going to go run a marathon. Yeah. But I'm just going to try all the things that I've, you know, not wanted to do, you know, and I'm going to start with like five sit-ups. I'm going to start with five sit-ups, legit. Okay. Tomorrow morning I'm adding five sit-ups to my routine. Cool, cool. I think five is a good place to start after 10 years of none. Yes, yes, absolutely. Cool. How much support, guidance would you like from me? What would you like in terms of the next step towards, you mentioned rollerblading? <laughs> not rollerblading. Oh, rollerblading's not for skating, me. Skating, yes. Skating, Correct. sorry. Retro um, all the way. Okay. And uh, running maybe, the mm. eating, it depends on what you enjoy the most. What, what, yeah. What um, what I'll, how about, how about I take, how about I do a week of a little bit of kind of finding my feed again, I guess. Yeah. And then um, I can either email you or text you and, or, call you and give you an update on how my week was and what I liked and what I didn't like or what I struggled with probably because if I didn't like it it's probably because I struggled yes I don't like things that I'm not good at so I'm not going to go roller skating because I don't want to break anything just sure. yet sure, sure. Um, but I'm going to try and maybe some sit-ups and do some um the some weights um just to strengthen my upper body and just to give me a bit of confidence might go for more than two walks a week to get moving yeah, yeah. and to start little if i overcommit, i won't stick to it no yeah maybe don't start with the 10 kilo on each hand kind of no yeah no. Yeah, yeah yeah good and i'll try and do some research to find out about that 10 kilo thing or see if i can speak to my gyno about it it's not the same doctor but mm -hmm. um maybe i can just ask him the questions and see what he says he might know or like you said there might be updated papers or something yeah it might have been As 10 kilos <laughs> in a specific position yeah and for the next mm. year or two but as you're healing and as you're, you're mm. as, as you age as well your tissues change yeah yeah no i'll find out for that for the next for our next catch up then or you tell me how we catch up so i can text you or i can email you if yeah, it's yeah. easier yeah, yeah. and um we'll take it from there cool any questions from today no no, no.